Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, if it is morning for you. Today is October 7th, year 2020. Here we are on Facebook Live uh, with our panel. Um, I'm sure all of you are used to uh, the panel by now. We have Eileen, uh, who's been with us, is going to help us give insights on her part. We have April, who is a psychic medium, a Reiki, Reiki healer, a spiritual teacher in her own right. Uh, we, we have our Qigong teacher, Kelly. Travis, our uh, musician and uh, spiritual teacher, and he's going to provide his own insights. And we are joined and an honor and a privilege to have all of you here on the panel and everyone out there. I want Caesar to introduce himself if you wanna uh, give a quick two or three minute introduction and I'll kind of uh, start off. Thank you. Sure, thank you, Poonam. Um, welcome everybody. I, I'm grateful to be here and uh, to meet all everybody and hope to uh, carry on some conversations afterwards. Um, so I began a spiritual journey here um, where I committed myself fully approximately 13 years ago. Um, uh, through some tragedies in my life, uh, it seems to be the normal these days, and I just needed some answers, and I um, seeked out just about every religion there was, um, because I needed answers, and I wasn't going to stop until I found them. Um, I've known I was a channel since the age of seven, um, somewhat of a medium, if you would, and um, it wasn't until I actually read the Tolly books um, that the shift happened for me um, several years ago. And uh, it's been joyous ever since. Uh, there's bad moments in a day, but that's literally all they are is moments anymore instead of bad days. Um, I, I try to practice uh, my, my spiritual journey every day, every chance I get. So there are no more irritations. I like to call them opportunities. Um, opportunities to what? Opportunity to practice. Um, and it's through, you know, um, teachers like Poonam and, um, you know, Tolis, the sad gurus of the world that I cling to lately Abraham Hicks and I, I just seem like I'm spending you know five or six hours a day and I just can't get enough of it I just my heart is just pulled to it and I spend a lot of time um, giving back in whatever way I can a lot of it's just guidance and advice I do do a lot of readings um, but mostly I do it now for other channels other mediums other clairvoyance uh, because they're the ones out there reaching a lot of people where I don't have necessarily the time and I don't like to do it as a business um, but I figured that's the best way I can help the most people is by helping those who help a lot of people. And um, that's about it. And I'm a musician and um, and I work full time. I run my own business and um, I'm grateful to be here. And every moment that I get to learn um, is a blessing for me. Thank you so much, Caesar. You're very welcome. One of the conscious manifestations from Travis was to manifest music that holds presence. Right, Travis? And um, this is a really great opportunity because um, even during our group meditation, we, uh, I think it's like uh, what everyone gravitates towards somehow seems to be like Native American. What's that sound in one of the uh, meditations? Is it like a, what is, do you know what the name of the instrument is? I know exactly what you're talking about, but I'm trying to remember what instrument it is. I'd have to hear it again. It almost sounds exactly like it's an hollow uh, instrument with beads inside and somebody's shaking it. Is it a rain stick? I mean, I haven't heard it, but that's just the, the instrument that comes to mind. It's, it's hollow with beads in it. It's... It is, right? So it is so beautiful, Travis, like um, I've heard, like I played and indiscriminately, right? Like uh, it won't be one person, it won't be just Eileen. So many people get gravitated towards uh, that music. So I am wishing that if Caesar and you are here, that you'll produce more and more of those kind of sounds that the moment you hear it, right? your vibrational frequency just rises. Absolutely. It's so beautiful. So thank you. Thank you for that. 
So one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and this is something that Travis has brought up as part of his uh, spiritual practice, is nutrition. So uh, between, um, I've seen Sadhguru post something about uh, food. Um, a lot of people um, on the Facebook group have posted about uh, I have anxiety, I have uh, uh, depression, and then uh, how do I alleviate it, right? It also ties back into the pain body. Um, so the pain body is not going to uh, be released just by um, meditation. It requires like the whole full package of mind, body, spirit, right? So I would like Travis, since he brought up, so to give a little bit more background, right? Um, one second, I'm going to, there is some feedback. Perfect, thank you. So Travis, I would like you to speak to something as simple as what I've heard medical mediums say is um, hydration. For generations, human beings have been dehydrated. Makes sense? So let's speak to nutrition. How does it assist in a spiritual uh, practice? Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, um, I, I'm sure I could eat uh, <laughs> healthier. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely for myself, I mean, something like hydration is really easy, um, because you don't really have to worry all that much. It's going to sound very obvious, but <laughs> you don't really have to worry all that much about what it is that you drink. Um, you need to drink water. <laughs> so that's how you hydrate. And, um, <laughs> so, um, usually for myself, if I'm not sure if I have had enough water, I'll drink more. <laughs> so, um, cause I, I, it's, I, I, I'm hard pressed to think of times that I've had too much understanding that of course you can, uh, drink too much water. Um, also, uh, you know, again, just these are just very basic things, but just, you know, uh, on like days where I'm much more physically active, I'm going to find myself drinking a lot more water. But um, I mean, I guess, you know, part of it for myself personally is, and part of what's fascinating about nutrition and, and hydration is um, it's just kind of um, fun to marvel at. Um, if we think about uh, our bodies on, on, a, on a cellular level um, and how they're constantly um, it, it, rebuilding and recreating um, and, and, and dying off as well, cells are dying and, and being released. Um, so we can put some consciousness into what it is that we're creating our bodies out of, we can consciously create our bodies. And, and so, um, and, uh, you know, I guess to go with some of the more Western lenses of looking at it is, you know, you, I definitely look at my, ma my macronutrients and micronutrients as far as just like, you know, protein and carbs and uh, what's the other one there, um, fats. Um, yeah, I love good fats, things like walnuts and omegas and those kinds of oils. They really help seem to help my brain function well. Um, and to eat, um, foods with lots of water in them, like fruits and vegetables. Um, and, you know, preferably things that are grown naturally and things like that. So again, it's all very intuitive, very basic, but, um, I think that the effects of, of stuff like that should, you know, shouldn't be underestimated. Um, especially if we're dealing with things like anxiety and depression and different sorts of inability to focus, things like that. A lot of those things I think should be addressed with meditation, good food, good sleep, um, good exercise, 
before going to anything like uh, pharmaceutical drugs. I think that people should exhaust all those other measures first before. That's just my own personal take. So, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll close with this. It's just that, um, uh, well, for one, our bodies are made primarily out of water. And I really do um, believe that in our, uh, like in, in the way that we meditate or pray or bless anything in that like that. Um, what is it? Was it, I don't know if it was in what the bleep do we know or what was that other movie that was similar where they had all those different um, bottles of water that had been like blessed by monks or people had thought funky ill thoughts uh, at, at, at the water and they were able to look at it um, under a, a very powerful microscope and you could see the molecular makeup of the water either looked like these beautiful snowflakes or like these weird amorphous uh, kind of funky looking uh, structures depending on the energy that went into it and to me that's very powerful and very fascinating and so understanding that we are water um, and we're all beautiful little snowflakes. <laughs> so um, just that we can be blessing ourselves and blessing one another and blessing what we eat in that in a, in a playful sort of way. It's not it doesn't have to be a weird ritual or big deal. But I think there's power in that too. So. Perfect. Thank you, Travis. Mm -hmm. Because um, even in the you know, it seemed like synchronicity. Um, when we did the uh, Dr. Evan Alexander's class, even he talked about how the non-conceptual intelligence, like there's consciousness flowing through us that if we left it alone, if we raised our consciousness, our body, there's a lot of uh, scientific research of the placebo effect that people have gone into remission by themselves, no intervention. So, um, what, what I would say is even if they are on medication, uh, yeah, use your medication, but then start to investigate functional medicine, right? Uh, can I change my diet? Can, can I cleanse? Uh, uh, what I've seen off the uh, medical medium books, a lot of our disease state is out of uh, heavy metal toxins. And you know, Travis was saying, like, even if he steps out, he's breathing smoke. He's polluting himself, right? We are polluting our body just by breathing the air. And we cannot, it, it's automatic that we get polluted, right? How much ever a person can think that, oh, I'm going to be pure and I'm going to sit in meditation. But once you step outside your home, the air is going to be full of pollutants. So cleansing and perfect, good nutrition, right? And I, um, I also believe that the intention of doing the organic, right? The non-GMO organic, then you're thinking of the kindness that with which that farmer actually kind of, you know, consecrated action, built the soil to be organic and then created this vegetable so hold the vegetable and then cook it, right? Uh, like I was eating a zucchini yesterday and I like very gently like made noodles out of it. And it was beautiful. So thank you. Thank you for that, Travis. Since it was your topic, I thought you should start first. It seems close to your heart. So thank you. Kelly, did you want to talk about nutrition being the Qigong teacher and how much nutrition plays? Sure. Thank you. Um, I've been very conscious of nutrition my entire life. I actually grew up uh, eating very clean. And it wasn't until I moved into the city in my 20s that I had access to um, you know, more junk food than you could throw a stick at. Although I never really sort of developed the habit you know, every once in a while, um, eating, uh, you know, a chocolate bar or something like that. Uh, nutrition, in terms of um, doing qigong, in terms of healing the body, strengthening the body, conditioning the body, eating as clean as possible facilitates the body's regenerative capacity. 
So being able to eat clean and having clean eating habits, even, even if you indulge in alcohol every once in a while or, or, you know, smoke a cigar every once in a while, which is actually something that I like to do. It's sort of like kind of checking in to see where my body is at and the impact and the response and also where my ego likes to try and go with that. Um, dark leafy greens are our mainstay of my diet. Celery is a mainstay of my diet, both, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> uh, I like nuts. Uh, mixed nuts are a uh, also something that I eat a lot of. I'll buy one of those big tubs and, and eat it. Uh, when I am running around, help my dad, and I'll just have the, the tub beside me or, or nearby where I can like grab a few handfuls. I tend to graze a lot. I, I rarely sort of sit down and have three solid meals in one place. If, if I ever do, it's usually dinner, but it's usually a late dinner. The effects of eating properly, especially a lot of vegetables. I mean, uh, one of the ways that I hydrate myself during the day, instead of, you know, drinking a lot of water, if I'm driving a lot is to make sure that I have cucumbers or celery with me because they're really, really high in uh, water content and minerals and good fiber. So, I mean, I, again, this is one of the reasons why I love celery so much is because really, really high in, in water, fiber, minerals, and it'll stay in your system and the fiber will help balance your blood sugar out. So that's one of the things that I, that I use celery for. Um, in terms of helping the body heal, I often also include apple cider vinegar in my, in my diet on a regular basis. I also include a really good uh, green drink or you, you, micronutrients, macronutrients in a in powder form where I'll, I'll put them in um, one of my protein shakes or something like that, or I'll just put them in water and have it with me during the day to help make sure that I have enough minerals and enough nutrients in my body. Because it is one of the things when you are doing Qigong is like you actually use more water and more nutrients and need more minerals in your system because what you do with Qigong is you are actually engaging your nervous system and causing more efficient electrical charges to run the length of your ner full nervous system. And that requires actually more water to support the electrical charge in your nervous system. It's just basic human physiology. The nervous system uses electricity. The nervous system uses fats to myelinize the sheath of the ganglions of the nervous system. So you need to eat healthy in order to be able to fully realize deep potential and deep skill level with Qigong. So what I'm hearing is, is uh, um spiritual practice or uh, Eckhart may not actually focus on nutrition, but I'm hoping everybody has the logic to say Eckhart has had that fireworks kind of awakening. So he may not need to focus on all the aspects, all the tools, right? Like doing a meditation practice or managing nutrition, but all of us that have been so bad with our diet, eat uh, fried food, like Indian, South Indian food is, South Asian food is all fried, deep fried, right? So eat deep fried food. So if we want to seriously increase our presence power, what I'm hearing Kelly and Travis say is nutrition is really, really important. And I do the barley grass uh, juice powder, the green drink nice. with wild blueberry. And uh, for omega threes, I recently started spirulina, uh, Travis, but uh, it has, I'm vegetarian and it has a very oceany, fishy taste. It's very hard, very hard for me to consume it. So I just do like a small half a teaspoon, but I'm trying, I'm trying. If you um, put on, if I, if I could just add a little, sure. you could also try chlorella. Okay. It is so, omega-3? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, condensed 
uh, blue green algae as well. Uh, okay. Macronutrient, just like spirulina, get the cracked cell chlorella. Okay. Because otherwise it's very, very hard on, on the digest or can be very hard on the digestion. Okay. You get the cracked cell chlorella. I think that's what it's called, which means it's, it's kind of been fermented before it got pressed into, I, I, I use tablets. Awesome. Yep. Good tips. Good nutrition tips. April, did you want to contribute to nutrition? How does it affect your presence power or the ability to maintain sustained presence? Thank you. Well, um, I, you know, I've, I've had, I've had that thought before and I've had that question in my mind, like, oh, I need to be totally vegetarian before I could and I don't know if that's necessarily the truth or the truth for everybody. Um, for me, um, I actually have never liked meat, even as a child. <laughs> and I was raised by my father, who was a definitely a one pan man. So um, he would take us fishing and on the way home, I would find something to blow air into the bucket to keep the fish alive, we would get home and he would cut their heads off. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've had, I, I need help, right? Uh, he uh, would cook deer all the time and I don't care who, I don't care what you say, you can taste deer a mile away. Um, so I've really never really liked meat or really ate meat. I don't know if that's necessarily the answer. Um, I do think that of course the plant-based uh, is better. It's more in line as far as eating live. We are live and then we are the colors and we are the chakras and, you know, eating the live. I, I definitely think it's much better. Um, I think probably and some spiritual teachers have said this to where uh, it's more of the intent uh, behind the eating, behind the cooking. Um, and Abraham Hicks says too, you know, if if you're going to think that eating one thing is going to make you sick, it's going to make you sick. And if not now, um, my children have that, uh, you know, kind of like mom spaghetti type thing where it's like mom has to make it because it's mom's and my food is the best and they don't know why. And what do you do to it? And I kind of use the whole SpongeBob theory as the secret ingredient is love. <laughs> but literally I was trained in Amadeus healing energy and they have a specific symbol for your food, kind of like the snowflake thing you were saying, Travis, of that you put into your food as healing. So it's like blessing your food. And I tell them it is love. That is the secret. Um, so I think balance is the key. Water is definitely important, even the colors of the rainbow. Um, but I do think intention is maybe a little more important, so. Um, thank you, April. To that, what I would add is um, if we, and this is the be the light part of uh, Eckhart, right? If we want to be consciously living, at least it's okay, we, we um, like, like I just said, if we ate a vegetable or a fruit, buying the intention, right? The love that, hey, if I buy, I may spend 30 cents more, but if I buy organic non-GMO um, fruit or vegetable, right? Then look at the kindness that I gave back to planet Earth right, indirectly through the farmer. So to me, the same thing, if you were eating an animal, don't waste any part of that animal, right? If you're eating a small piece of fish, don't waste it and make sure it's ethically sourced, right? It's grass-fed beef. It's, uh, what do they call it, free-range chicken, right? So that it was, that the animal actually, bloomed from kindness, right? And then you're consuming kindness. So, right, that intention that started with the, whoever was uh, 
taking care of the animal and then process the animal, how kindly was it done? And then it came into your body. You cooked it with kindness and love, right? As April was saying, to do, do everything with kindness, like it, make small pieces of fish, do it with presents and then cook it, but do get, get it into your body with kindness and know that end to end it was done with kindness. Uh, one of the things that uh, medical medium was saying, right? We, okay, if you're eating um, a lot of protein, right? Along with the protein, eat fruit, eat vegetables, because the fruit trees are what gives flowers and the flowers are what brings the bees and what keeps the, the what is it called? The regenerative cycle going, right? The bees are dying. So include fruit in your diet, right? A lot of fruit. So hopefully people get back into the fruit farming, right? It becomes like, a, just like how we do corn farming and wheat farming, we actually do a lot of fruit as, uh, as the demand, what is it called? Supply and demand. And as the uh, demand grows, the supply will grow. And we'll give back to these farmers that lovingly take care of um, all their fruit, all their vegetables, all their animals, right? All their chickens, all the eggs. So thank you. Thank you for that, April. Caesar. Did you want to talk about diet and nutrition and have you made any changes? Absolutely. Um, so I follow the yogi culture pretty closely. And, you know, that's the whole body, mind and spirit thing. I mean, it starts with the body. And like Travis was saying about, um, you know, on a cellular level, um, how everything is constantly dying and rejuvenating itself. Um, that's very true. And it's all basically about memory. Um, I started to pay attention to how I felt after I ate. Um, and it pretty much came to fruition after about six months that my diet had completely changed um, without even trying. Um, you know, and I stick to the fruits and the vegetables, the organics, the nuts, the berries, the good stuff. Um, I try not to cook any of it anymore because I find that um, eating it in the, in the raw element of um, you know, the cooking takes a little bit of the nutrients away. Um, eating it in the raw um, seems to provide me longer. I know it sustains itself longer within my body. But, um, yeah, I started to pay attention to how I felt after I ate. And uh, he was talking about the energy, you know, the molecular structure of water changes just as you look at it. Um, you know, they've scientifically shown this. And you know, in the yogi culture, they would tend to get their water and put it in a copper vessel um, overnight so it would calm down because as it's rushing through the pipes, it takes on a turbulent energy. And that was the reason for doing that. And typically they would place a rose petal or um, a lotus petal on top of it overnight. And that would just kind of infuse it with love. And when they drink the water, um, they drink it with mindfulness, meaning they're, you know, drinking it compassionately and putting that type of energy into the water because it becomes you. So, you know, the food that you eat, um, you know, everything is memory. Um, they say this a lot in the yogi culture as well, that, you know, you can eat a banana, I can eat a banana and it becomes a part of me, I'm male. Poonam, you can eat the same banana and it becomes you. Um, same thing goes for an orange anywhere in the world. Anybody eats an orange, it's gonna become literally that person. So. You know, again, I just pay attention to what I eat. Um, I try to eat it compassionately, like you said, and like April just was speaking on, you know, infusing everything with love. And that's what I think it's really all about. You know, it's, um, you know, not just what you eat, but how you eat it. You know, when you put that type of great energy into it, there's just something that, something about it that it becomes you. Um, they always say you are what you eat. That, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I just try to pay attention to it. And it's made a, a world of difference for me in the past you know, several years, it took about six months to make the transformation completely. And, um, and I'm feeling much better today in my fifties than I did in my twenties, just off a of diet alone. Um, as far as the, um, uh, you know, medicine goes, there's always in the yogi culture, they're always prescribing, you, um, uh, anything other than pharmaceuticals. So, I mean, there's a lot of turmeric in the diets. Bee pollen is a lot of something that I incorporate into my, um, green shakes and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, there is literally a food for everything um, as far as medicine goes and healing. 
you know, migraine headaches, a handful of raw almonds. Um, melanoma is high in um, pistachios, stuff like that. So I try to stick with that anymore, um, opposed to the medical end of things with the, with the pharmaceuticals. And it makes a world of difference to me. Thank you so much, Caesar. Thank you. That was uh, really good feedback. What I would say is, is um, it's not easy to make that choice, right? It's not easy to make that shift to say, oh, I'm going to, today, maybe I won't eat the meat for my uh, lunch, but I'm going to eat some fruit, vegetables, and walnuts, like Travis was saying, right? Your mind is going, your ego, our ego, and the, like Caesar said it perfectly, our tongue has so much memory. It loves the Taco Bell. I, I don't know why people are crazy. I'm in Texas, so people are crazy in Texas about Taco Bell. It's like the worst kind of food ever found on this face of this earth, but people are crazy about Taco Bell. So what is that? They cannot get rid of that taste of the Taco Bell. They, the, that's back to the compulsion and tendencies that we were talking about, right? This is also a compulsion. So I feel that, I mean, I'm seeing this, it's beautiful energy on the panel that every person as their presence power has become stronger. They've made much more kinder choices, compassionate choices, right? In how they eat and what they eat. So thank you. Eileen, did you wanna uh, talk about consumption and nutrition? Any changes over the past year? Um, only recently, um, not anything specific except for I, um, I've done a lot of research on like quantum physics and, um, like mind body connection. And I know I've mentioned it a lot here that like the whole idea of like beliefs, like can lead to changes and so one of the things is just like accepting where I am and believing that it's where I'm supposed to be and so something I've noticed lately is um like I only eat what I enjoy and so I find that like I enjoy different things now so like I might eat um zucchini or I might eat red cabbage or I might eat things that I've liked before but would eat them in um, conjunction with something else because in my the way I was raised it was like you had to have every food group like in the meal breakfast lunch and dinner you had to have protein you had like and now like my daughter wanted pasta the other day and I was like oh well I like pasta let's make pasta. And she's like, well, what are we going to have with it? And I was like, do we need to have something with it? <laughs> it's like, I really only want pasta. And so, and she was like, okay. And so like we, you know, had um, pasta, but I just find that now, like I only eat what I enjoy and um, I don't, I'm not rigid. Like I would have been before where I would be like, okay, what am I going to eat with this? Or now it's like my breakfast might just be a banana or my breakfast might be bananas and peanut butter or it's just whatever I enjoy. So, and I, I feel fine. So. Thank you, Eileen. No problem. That's perfect. Don't do anything that does not give you joy. That comes from Eileen. No. No. And like, I say that to my husband all the time, because he'll say, well, I want, I don't do dairy. And I haven't done dairy for almost 20 years, maybe. And he really likes cheese. So he'll like, ask me to like make a lasagna. And I'm like, well, can I make it without cheese? He's like, how do you make lasagna without trees? I'm like, well, then I'll buy you a lasagna, but I'm not cooking a lasagna because I'm not eating it if it has cheese in it. Um, and that's kind of how it all started. But now I'm like, 
no, you want lasagna, you can go out somewhere to eat and order yourself a lasagna. No lasagna in my house. That eliminates a lot in your diet, right? One little change. Um, I don't see any questions, so we have no questions today. They're just all connected. I'm just sending the first one and there's two more, but I think they're all kind of together. Samar says, anybody making kombucha and your thoughts on it in a typical diet? No, the rest is um, comments on her question, not another question. Okay. Caesar, did you want to get started on the kombucha? Um, I'd prefer not to. I'd let somebody else take the lead here, I think. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes. Travis, did you want to talk about kombucha? Uh, gladly, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 I like kombucha. I have made it uh, some. I somebody gave me a, a mother at some point, and uh, was doing it for a while, and, and then I left town and was traveling and wasn't able to keep it up. Um, and I mean, I kind of enjoy it as a as a craft of just you know, trying to dial in the, the flavor and the carbonation. And I never really quite got where I wanted to as far as like getting the carbonation, how I would want it or, um, it's fascinating. Um, I mean, I don't really understand the, the details around the, the, you know, the science of it other than it's, it's a, you know, probiotic and there's billions of I don't know what they're called, but it's really good for your gut. Um, I like it. Um, and in my experience with it, um, I mean, I, I've had periods where I've drank it pretty regularly. I haven't drank it regularly over a very long extended period of time. Um, and when I was making it myself, even then I would, it would kind of come in batches. So I'd have some time away from it, maybe a week or two, and then be drinking it every day or every other day for a week or so. Um, and so to me, that felt fine. It, 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 I, did, I never felt like I was bumping up against the wall where I was wondering if I was having too much. Um, so I think that, you know, anything like that in moderation is, um, again, it's just listen to your body because um, what's going to work for one isn't going to necessarily work for another. Um, but uh, um, I'm personally a fan. I mean, I, I, I like it. Um, and I, I, I thought I might throw in something too, just to kind of go back to the earlier uh, topic around food. Um, um, it, it just one is because in, in regards to uh, you know, a, a presence practice or a meditation practice. Um, just one f thing that I've noticed is it's, it's, it's fun to play with uh, how much you eat. Because I've noticed that I've had times if I, where I'm eating lighter um, and I can sometimes get into um, more uh, just meditative states access those states easier sometimes eating lighter almost to the point too where then at certain points i'm going to want to eat something kind of heavy just to ground myself <laughs> down um where you go that I, I just i need to i need to ground so so it's it's worth mentioning that and just playing around with that and experimenting with that in one's meditation or presence practice with uh how much food you're eating um because i know there's kind of that sweet spot where uh, when your body is not working to digest, um, but it's also not, um, so it's not depleted um, to, to where it's really neat, really needing and really kind of scream hollering at you for more food for energy. There's that sweet spot where you can have this really clean, high kind of energy 
because your body isn't really working. It's not really having to do any work, but it's, it's, it's getting all, so, so just, to, just to throw that out there. It's kind of fun sometimes to uh, experiment with. So. I think the, um, thank you, Travis, for that input. I think the time of the day even matters because uh, like how Caesar was saying about yogic sciences, uh, they, they believe it's between 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Do your meditation between 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. and the uh, vibrational energy will rise higher. So now everybody may be saying, why are we saying, uh, do this, do that, and increase your presence power because the reasoning behind it is how are you going to dissolve your pain body? You have to increase your presence power, right? And we can't eat Taco Bell, like a big Texas meal, which is, uh, what is it? Chicken fried steak with lots of cheese and French fries, and then sit in meditation and say, okay, let my pain body dissolve, right? You agree, Travis? It, it's not gonna. It's yeah, gonna I get... do. I do. I, I just every time you mention Taco Bell, I go back to when I was seventeen and I was starting. I, it, that was when I was starting to have these very pronounced awakening experiences. And I worked at Taco Bell, and <laughs> and I would almost be in this like, and I I would clean the place, like I was cleaning areas that nobody had ever cleaned, and I was just happy to be there and work. And I would, I would get a free meal every day and give it to friends from my high school that would go through the drive through And I was going home and making my own organic vegetables and rice and herbal teas and all this stuff. Because my, my high school friend was like kind of a, a spiritual teacher and he was showing me all of these nutritional. So I just go back to those funny days of happily working at Taco Bell and then going home to eat my uh, like, you know, organic hippie food. <laughs> so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it hippie food. It's, well, I, I don't mean, to, I don't mean that as a dismissive. Yeah, but just, but just the, the, the contrast, I guess, right. from the Taco Bell, yeah. It's like Bill Maher <laughs> calling everybody in California, those kale eating uh, liberals or something. Right? Crazy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, a very yeah, yeah. Common yeah, yeah, thank you for steer, that. Stereotype. <laughs> thank you. This is fun. Kelly. Kombucha. Kombucha. I have not made kombucha in a few years. I had a, a roommate who, uh, was really good at it. And we make few batches over several years together. The thing about kombucha, just like apple cider vinegar, is that it has a mother in it. And what people need to understand is that the mother is basically this floating um, bacterial pancake, sort of like a little wafer, soggy wafer that floats in the bottom. And the, the mother is basically healthy bacteria that our body loves. So this is why kombucha is really, really important for the body, why apple cider vinegar is really, really important for the body because to get the acidophilus, or I forget exactly what bacterial culture it is that is in kombucha, to get that into our body, either through kombucha or apple cider vinegar, uh, this is why yogurt is so important, um, certain strains of yogurt to get the bacterial culture, the healthy and the good bacteria in our bodies at a nice solid presence in our gut. It's something that really, really helps the whole body function. And in Qigong, the health of the gut is really, really important because down, if you put your thumbs together and place them on your belly button and lay your hands on your lower abdomen where your gut is, this area of the body is called the lower dantian or the lower cauldron. And this actually has as many, if not more neural bundles in it than what's between your ears, because this is the engine that built you when you were in the womb. So all of that neural network is still there and it's wrapped around the gut. You have the vagus nerve in the body, which is the big super highway for the nervous system that runs top to bottom and everywhere in the body. And it has ganglions inside your gut. So having kombucha in your diet on a regular basis will help support your nervous system 
It'll help keep your gut healthy. It'll help keep the pH balance in your gut healthy and more neutral than acidic. And this is sort of like one of the reasons why a lot of diseases happen in the body is because we get too acidic, we get too toxic, either through heavy metals, uh, other chemicals, or also toxic thought patterns that cause tension, that strain our organs and our systems function so that it's harder for our body to function in a balanced way. And th this is where, you know, the, the, the synergy with Qigong comes in, in my mind, is having kombucha or something like kombucha, which is why I go to apple cider vinegar. It's a little easier to get. It's, you know, it's a lot more common on the shelves here in Winnipeg than it used to be uh, even just a few years ago, which is great. So there's a lot more options out there but it's that healthy bacteria. And this is the one thing that the body actually really, really needs is that healthy bacteria, that constant infusion of healthy bacteria and kombucha is great for it. It's really, really potent. It's really, really healthy for the body. And it's something that I thoroughly recommend to anyone and everyone to be perfectly honest, because it'll help balance out your gut health. And again, one of the things with kombucha or something like uh, a drink or an element that has a bacterial mother in it is that you sort of want to like um, do a little trial and dilute it with water or something. Uh, there are a lot of great kombucha drinks out there. One of my favorites is a combination of kombucha with beet because beet is really, really good for the body. And I like to drink it on an empty stomach because then there is nothing in between the, the healthy bacteria and your gut and being able to absorb the healthy bacteria into your system, and into your gut. Perfect. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for that tip. April, did you want to say something about kombucha? Have you ever tried it? Um, I actually, I tried it one time and I'm not a fan. <laughs> it was probably the worst thing I've ever tasted in my life. Um, so, but if it's, it's something you can do and you like, absolutely. Um, I just go about it different ways of getting, you know, the probiotics and getting my stomach, my gut, uh, which I have a very sensitive stomach anyway. So I can't just I can't just try things like that. It, it doesn't work out well for me, but there is like a, another question here that they asked because I have to help my daughter with her science okay. um, about uh, teenage boys mm -hmm. um, not wanting to eat properly. And um, for that, one thing is, you know, you take it with a grain of salt, their age, hopefully they will grow it. And we do like, I don't, very few adults I know today eat McDonald's when they're adults, right? But when I was a kid, I always wanted a Big Mac. But today it's like, ugh, you know. The other thing is not bringing uh, those foods into the home. Um, and I always, I take my girls with me and I always like, hey, you wanna try something new? So they actually uh, surprised me. They got seaweed chips. I was awesome. like, yay. You know, so doing things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, she says that she's struggling. So just maybe changing some of the options in the home, but I wouldn't worry too. The other thing I wanted to mention too real quick was, um, you know, Kelly, you can expand on this or, or maybe somebody else can, um, using uh, kinesiology, muscle testing, you take, your vitamin or you take your fruit or your butter, hold it, you stand and you hold it, knees kindly bent because you don't want to be stiff and you ask the food if you should eat it. If it's a yes, your body will sway forward. If it's a no, your body will sway back. And it's your body telling you, should I take these three vitamin C or should I not? So that's another Kind of suggestion that I thought of as you guys were talking. Perfect. Oh, that's a perfect recommendation, April, because that's what Eckhart says that he goes into the store and 
like every day it's not the same thing. He walks around the store and asks his body, what does his body want to eat? It almost is like that, right? Your example. So you have to leave? Okay. Thank you so much for your contribution. Grateful for it, April. Thank you have guys, a have a good evening. night. I'm off to Thank do you. science. <laughs> good luck with science. Right. Thank Later. you. Bye-bye. Caesar has been posting something on the chat. Did you want to just speak it, Caesar, and give everyone this wisdom? Well, I was just speaking. She has something uh, in reference to, you know, what advice should she give her teenager? And, you know, the few simple rules, again, is to pay attention to your body. Um, never eat till you're full. You always want to try to go to bed with an empty stomach, uh, meaning give your time, uh, give yourself time to have a bowel movement before you go to sleep. Um, when the food is lying in the stomach, um, it tends to put pressure on your organs while you're sleeping. Um, so it can disrupt the sleep pattern, um, you know, and then just eating the food, uh, you know, enjoying it and, and really being mindful of how you're eating. 70% I mentioned there of the digestion process takes place in the mouth before you even swallow your food. Um, you know, it's broke down through the enzymes in your mouth and the, in the chewing process and stuff like that. But, you know, the, uh, going back to the yogi culture again here, um, you know, there's three types of food and they consider everything either pranic, non-pranic or, or neutral. So some foods give you energy, some foods make you feel lethargic and some foods doesn't change the energy level. Um, and that's where paying attention to, uh, to the body um, after you eat, you'll be able to determine, you know, what type of food you're actually eating without even knowing what you're eating. Um, I've never did the kombucha myself. Um, I got a very, nah, very sensitive to food. Um, and like uh, she was saying, um, you have to enjoy it. That was one thing I, I just couldn't stomach. Um, what I'm trying to think of the one that has the mother in it. Um, is that kimchi? Does anybody know? That has the live organism in it? Well, kombucha, kombucha does, so does apple cider vinegar. Kimchi is fermented. Okay. Kind of like okay. horseradish. Okay. Which is also yeah. really good for you too. Right on. Yeah, I've experimented that with a little bit, and uh, I just couldn't stomach it. I mean, I just got real, didn't work out well for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't like, you know, start liking uh, vegetables for the most part until I was in my late 30s, and now that's pretty much all I eat. And it's amazing how you can snack on them. You know, I eat a very light breakfast in the morning, um, sometimes just lettuce, maybe a couple pieces of an orange and an apple out the door, and uh, I won't eat again till dinner time, and it's always extremely light. But I never eat till I'm full anymore. I just eat till I'm satisfied. And if there's food left on the plate, then um, it makes a difference. And I think that's why, uh, you know, some of the nicer restaurants serve you a very small portion. You know, if they tend to feed you a larger portion and you walk out, you, you're going to eat it all because it's so delicious because you're paying off some money for it as well. Um, and you leave the restaurant bloated. Um, you don't feel so good when your stomach's full. Um, they want you to feel good when you leave the store and... Um, and so again, I just try to eat till I'm satisfied, never full. So that that affects the next meal as well, and how you um what you intake as well. So keeps you lighter, keeps the brain sharp. Thank you so much, Caesar. That was a good tip. Travis, did you want to talk about the teenage boys having uh, they eat any kind of food? Uh, let yeah. me read the question. Yeah, um, I mean, it, I, th I think this is, this is, it's a question about diet and nutrition. It's also a question about parenting, I think. And so um, me not having any children, I'm an expert on parenting, but uh, no, no, I'll, I'll go, I'll go ahead with, with what I think <laughs> uh, um, in my limited experience. So, uh, but, but I was on the, I was a teenage boy once, so I do have that going for me. Um, you know, I think that um, uh, th this this is true in regards to to parenting, but in but in regards to any interactions with humans, <laughs> is that uh, the the best way to that that we the way what the way that we learn is through mirroring is is through modeling behavior. I, I, I heard a funny story once where a woman brought her son to Gandhi and and she said, can you please help me? My, my son won't stop 
eating sugar. He's eating all this sugar nonstop. And can you help? Hell, can you help us? Can you help me? And he says, sure, I, I can do that, but bring your son back in two weeks. And so she brings, she says, okay, and brings her son. I don't even know if this story is true. I, I've never checked to verify it. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> she brings her son back in two weeks and she's curious and asks why she had to leave and come back. And he said, well, I had to stop eating sugar because I wasn't going to uh, speak to your son and you about not eating sugar when I do exactly that. And I think that there, there's some kernel of truth in that um, or something of value in that, in that if we want our children to eat well, eat well. Because they, they, might not, they might not pick it up until later on and that's okay, they're young, their bodies can handle it. <laughs> they can eat almost anything. Um, it's, it's of course good nutritious food is gonna be good for them but what I don't, what I think is, is it might not be so healthy is, is, is to, um, you know, I think that, that kids from, from a pretty young age, as best we can as parents, because we have to protect them and take care of them. But the more that we can show them that we honor and, and respect their own choice, their own space, their own freedom, and give that to them and trust them, and, and, and display for them that we see them as fully capable human beings, the more easily and readily they'll grow into exactly that. Um, it, because we create the space for that. So again, I know that probably like as for parents hearing that come from somebody who doesn't have any children, I, I can imagine they go, oh, that sounds great. I love your theory. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but I really, I really do, uh, believe in in that in that offering one another space, offering our children space, and treating them as if uh, you know it, they are capable, they are intelligent, and um, and um, oftentimes when we push things on people, whether or not it's our children or anyone else, um, they're going to say no just because they want their own space. It has nothing to do with the food necessarily, um, and so. So I, th I think so. I think through through modeling and and through allowing space, um, I think there's a lot of power in that. So. You did like a master's level or almost a PhD level in parenting, Travis, because <laughs> I was going to say the same thing is uh, if we eat healthy, they are going to em emulate what we eat. The more healthier, the more we juice. Like Kelly was saying, right? Green juice. The more yeah. you do it, yeah. Then the other is that vibrational energy is going to pass on to. And if you can make healthy, delicious too. I mean, I was really lucky as a kid. My my mother was a, a chef for a number of years and just loved good food. So there was this celebration of good food, and that I was very just lucky to have that because it was amazing food so it wasn't just healthy it was delicious so that that always helps <laughs> thank you thank you for that and then uh the other part which eileen will say punam is going to say eileen knows i this is how you know we were talking about uh if you talk about abraham hicks and intention and um what is in your belief? If you keep saying, my kids are not eating healthy, 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 what are you focusing on? They're not eating healthy. And that's what you're consciously manifesting. What she calls, uh, you're either creating by default or you're creating through deliberate creation, which creating by default is unconscious creation which we normally do and deliberate creation would be the conscious manifestation that Eckhart talks about right so if you take off your focus from that and introduce like just add a salad like if they're eating a, a pizza pizza hut pizza then just uh, beside them cook your or make your own salad and place it beside the pizza whether they eat it or not doesn't matter but you have a salad for yourself as well as for them. And you've introduced or um, cut up some fruit, right? 
like throughout the days, let them snack on the fruit. Try apples, try orange. If they say, no, I don't like oranges, give them a glass of orange juice. That'll be fruit, organic. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. That was spot on, spot on. We are, we are doing PhD level. We are going through this with flying colors. Kelly, go ahead. Thank you. I uh, want to just completely agree with what Travis said. It's very simple, lead by example. I mean, um, again, I was very fortunate to have grown up in a family where my parents believed in eating healthy and we ate healthy. And we had, like, I grew up with a huge garden. Like, you, you lived on an old river lot that was uh, about 20 acres. So we had a huge garden, apple trees, orchard. I could go outside, I could get raspberries, I could get apples, I could get wild plums anytime I wanted to. Every, every two years, uh, the Saskatoon bush would bloom and we'd have Saskatoon. So I grew up understanding that uh, food was delicious. Food was, you know, you could actually have access if you just spend a little bit of time, you know, go out to the garden, you, you plant everything. You, there's a sequence and you could have fresh carrots, squash, pumpkins, potatoes, onions, garlic, every, everything that you really needed, literally at your fingertips if you wanted. And even the moments in my life where I was eating a lot of junk food, it would only be temporary. It only, I'd get really bored of it really fast because it was nowhere near as satisfying as real food. And I feel quite strongly about leading by example. I have, you know, I don't have any kids of my own, but... I grew up as the eldest cousin in the entire, you know, the entire family, my brother and I, and I would go and visit my aunts and uncles. And I would always watch how they fed their kids. And it was always one of those things where they would have the conversation. If they wanted something as in junk food, they had to eat their real food first. There was always a condition if they wanted access to, junk food or sweets or pop or something like that you had to eat your real food first and my mom and dad were actually really really good about that same sequence with me if i wanted dessert i had to eat i didn't have to eat everything all the time on my plate although when i got older and it was sort of you know growing teenage boy i would be eating everything on my plate it was you know also growing up in where i had like homemade pies and homemade desserts and homemade cookies all the time. It was just sort of like, it was just a very different mindset. So what Travis said was absolutely beautiful in terms of leading by example, because if you eat healthy, your kids will see that. If you have stuff handy, if you have both fruit and junk food, even if the kids will, you know, throw up a fuss and, you know, have their little tantrums about not having junk food or, you know, resist you because again, they're teenagers. It's sort of what teenagers do. It's I've been there myself too. So one of the things that I noticed with my aunts and uncles is that they would always have fresh fruit everywhere all the time. And the kids get used to it. And it's just sort of like one of those things you have, a, you have a bowl of fruit, you have bananas, apples, oranges, kiwis, mangoes, whatever. And you, also can cut it up and prepare it for your kids and have it out and ready and actually have it as the dessert and just put it in front of them where they don't have to do anything. It's already done for them. So they get used to eating it. So they stop questioning it because it's already done and it's just easy access. It's just easy, easier to just enjoy the, the fresh fruit than to have the fight about, you know, having junk food. My two cents. So eat your fruit first and then you can have your slice of pizza. Yeah, yeah. That's a good suggestion. But teenagers, they have a, their ego is like at the peak, Kelly, especially boys. Well, and one of, one of the things, one of the scientific facts about teenagers is because so much is going on hormone wise and in their nervous system, teenagers literally cannot make good decisions for themselves. 
because their nervous system is making brand new connections day in, day out and rewiring their brains for like, you know, two, three years, depending on, you know, the age, they literally cannot, they will do the easiest thing. They will do the thing that satisfies them the easiest because to think beyond that, to think about something that requires work is a challenge because they literally, you know, unless they have that support, it'll be a lot harder to get them to see that or to understand that. And it's just one of those things where you prepared and you, yeah, just like here, have your fruit first and then have the pizza. So, you know, it's in their system. And the, the good thing about having fruit before something like pizza is that it'll also help clean out the gut. It'll help clean out your digestive tract. So your body will actually be able to process something like pizza a lot better. So also along with the fact that, yeah, you're trying to offer them fruit. If they don't eat the fruit, that's okay. Give them space. What I'm hearing is give them spaciousness to yep. be just as they are. Because Tiara, what, what's going to end up happening is in that ego battle, the parent will lose. It's a, yes. Yes, and, and literally that scientific fact of teenagers literally being unable to make good decisions because, I mean, they can obviously, you know, there's broad strokes here. Obviously, teenagers can make good decisions, but the simple fact that their brains and their nervous systems are rewired and are building all these new bridges and these new connections because of the hormones and changes in the body, the logic will sometimes escape them. And, and I would say... Go ahead, Kelly. Sorry. And, and it's just sort of like that repetition of, you know, this is simple behavior support, right? You don't want to force it on someone. You want to give them space. You want to accept, again, like they're teenagers. They, they want to experiment. They want to do what's easiest. You know, kids have got this idea, you know, they get, they want to be comfortable, especially, I mean, in this crazy day and age, you know, they'll reach for fats and sugars and carbs which actually help uh, pacify tension in the brain. It'll, it supplies uh, oils and fats to the brain that actually help, uh, like they hit those uh, brain centers that calm the brain and calm the tension and calm the nervous system. So this is one of the reasons why junk food is such a big thing in, with teenagers because it's easy, you can get it anywhere and you don't have to do anything to prepare it. And it tastes good and it makes your body, it makes your brain feel good because there's all of, all of these hormonal connections and these hormonal bridges being built in the brain and nervous system. So they want that. And that's just natural. That's normal. And yeah, I just put the fruit there and have the pizza and just, you know, allowance, you know, this is also a practice of acceptance and gratitude for the opportunity to support a young person in making healthy choices and to educate them and to understand that it is not about the conflict. Do not use the conflict with the teenager as a way to create ego validation in their process or your process. Step away from it being a conflict and to look at it, to take the opportunity as a learning experience to see their development and their ego process. Because most teenagers will find, want to find something to be angry at their parents for, just because that's, again, part of the process, right? So looking at it as just the learning experience, but offering the options. Perfect. Thank you, Kelly. And I would say it does not only apply to food. So the allowing applies to the clothes that they wear, their behavior, their anger, their yep. ups and downs, because teenage boys are going to have hormonal ups, ups and downs. So yes. if your motherhood was never tested, this is the time that your motherhood is going to be tested. Here comes the challenge. Yeah. The teenage. Yeah. In the form, they are greatest spiritual teachers at that time. So thank you. Thank you for that question. And did you want to add something to it, Eileen? Since you have a boy that is almost, almost. Yeah, told me okay. tonight. Can't he just like, what did he call it? 
some kind of time travel or something to two more years because he needs to be 13. He's 11. And he's like, I just need to be 13. Why do you need to be 13? Because then I can like go places by myself or something like that. I don't know. I, he's already difficult enough at 11. Oh, um, I don't think I necessarily have anything to add. I do know that um, we struggle with the same thing here and he's, you know, 11. Um, don't struggle with that with my daughter. I've kind of struggled with that for, with him for his whole life actually. Um, but I've, all, I've very much enjoyed listening to everybody's um, feedback and uh, giving me some things to think about. So thank you. Thank you, Aline. Let's look at some more questions. Scrolling back. Do you want me to read the next one? Because there's a ton up there. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, so the next one is, um, sorry, from Cecile. Mm -hmm. um, says, what do you think about kimchi as a probiotic? I don't know that kind of came up in a other conversation, but different question. I think we answered that, right? That kimchi is also used as a probiotic, but some people uh, like it and some people don't. So we leave the probiotic discussion. We, we've talked about it a lot today. Um, and then we have Samar who's asking, what about um, massages for a healthy body? Travis, did you want to take that? Thank you, Aline. Massages for a healthy body. Um, like getting body work done kind of thing? Um, yeah. Um, That's how I took it. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it, it's, I think it's tremendously powerful. Um, uh, I know I had a time a, a few years back where um, I, I just felt like I had things inside I was holding on to, psychological, emotional things. And so um, I kind of went the therapy route and, and, and explored a lot of that for a year or so. And then I thought, okay, that's about as much of that as I care to do for now. Um, and I, and I really thought I would approach all of it through the body for a while after that, be, because it just can be kind of heady to approach all of it that way. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's a very, uh, relevant and powerful, just acknowledging that, um, that we can have mental emotional knots and blockages that manifest in our body physically. And so getting body work done um, and releasing those knots in the body, it's like you can approach it both ways. And so, so doing that I think can help us on our spiritual journey um, and help to release some of uh, memories uh, feelings, uh, and, and things that we might be holding on to. Um, and, and, and so it can be a, a source of, 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 of reflection and inner work and healing and really powerful. I think, uh, uh, one thing, um, is to, uh, find the right body worker because it is something that's so intimate and 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 it really the, the, you have to factor in their energy and their ways of being and seeing and doing into the equation and so i would say that if one wants to explore and experiment with that route to um it, tr it, it, it to to try try things out you know try out different things or different different people, different practices until they find what they feel really works for them. So there's some responsibility, I think, put on on the individual to, um, you know, it might be massage, it might be Reiki, it could be, there's there, different things that, that you might really feel work for you. So 
the only way to really find out, I think, is to go and put yourself out there and, and explore and experiment. But I think that it's it, it can be of tremendous value, the right person, the right situation. Thank you, Travis. Mm -hmm. Aline, did you want to contribute to the massage? Have you tried them? Yes, I actually very much agree with whatever everything that Travis said. Um, I do um, I do body work. I get um, massage, but I also work with the same therapist on reflexology, which I find very beneficial, and um, cranial sacral therapy, which is another one that I find very helpful, just very much like Travis was saying that it can kind of reduce the emotional piece kind of out of the body. Um, and so I also agree with finding the right person because I'm lucky enough that I've had someone for 12 years now, but in finding them, like I know that it's very much the therapist. Like she, um, I don't, I've had others in the past um, and it's definitely very much about um, the therapist's like own energy um, and how they work because they're all so different. But um, I find for me that reflexology, cranial sacral, and just deep tissue are very helpful on all of this. So even though I've made great gains in the last year through meditation, when I'm feeling kind of stuck, <laughs> um, you know, I can see her and um, she just kind of helps with that release of whatever it is, usually through cranial sacral. But love the question. Thank you. I have not ever uh, tried that therapy, the cranial sacral, or heard about it. But I'm it's like an energy. Um, so, like the therapist, like, um, they can feel and move the energy that's in your body. So then she is able to release it when it's like stuck in the different chakras. So it's, I very, Zoe actually really likes it, my daughter, but um, awesome. I enjoy it. Thank you. Kelly, you want to talk about massage? Sure. Uh, really short answer. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Caesar, did you want to add anything to what Travis? I think Travis kind of like gave like a good summary, right? There's nothing else that needs to be added. Yeah. Go ahead, Caesar. Thank you. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Travis hit it on the head. Um, I like the short answer over there from Kelly as well. Um, yeah, I had um, some issues with my body over the years. Um, you know, I've been doing construction work for 35 years, mostly cement work and brick work, and it's taken a toll on my body. Um, in addition to playing the drums, I've came down with things love, um, such as bursitis in my, you know, start off as a pinched nerve, and uh, it wound up to be bursitis in my shoulder, which, you know, used to scare me, you know, but the thought or the intention about being worried about it um, always seemed to bring it about. Um, that's like, you know, focusing on the wrong end of the stick, like you said. Um, you know, uh, somebody mentioned uh, kinesiology, um, and that's what I ended up turning to um, uh, for my shoulder, and it worked. And today I do a lot of stretching. Um, I have gotten massage work done, and uh, I found it very beneficial. Um, I find uh, since my divorce a few years ago, I massage my own body um, a lot, um, you know, while in almost a meditative state, um, laying in bed, you know, prior to before I go into a slumber. Um, and I try to create the feeling of gratitude while doing this to myself. Um, and then when I wake in the morning, it's uh, it's all about stretching. And I do a couple of chi exercises that uh, really help. And it's just about moving the energy um, in your body. And one of the exercises is just about taking your in breath, you know, expanding yourself, expanding your body, and then coming down almost into a folded position like this and blowing out, exhaling all of the energy, all of the air, not even until you can't push no more. And it's actually moving a, um, uh, a second energy center um, that the G masters have basically found uh, that is in your rump, basically at the end of your, your spine, I believe, your tailbone in that area. 
And I have found that moving that energy, and I would I would actually encourage everybody to, to look into that, um, about moving that energy there with a second energy field within your body that they're now discovering, you know, in the past uh, few years anyways. And I found it to be extremely beneficial in um, in a change and, you know, moving the energy in my body that was stagnant for a long time. I mean, I feel, I can actually feel my organs. It's, it's pretty, pretty weird these days, but I feel good. I feel light on my feet. Uh, but the massage work, yes, absolutely, 100%. Pamper yourself, um, you know, and if it's referring to pain, you know, let it be said that, you know, pain is just um, energy, blocked energy per se, that takes on a story. And it's the story that we're all told that pain is uncomfortable, it doesn't feel good. And um, that's probably a whole nother show or um, topic, really. But, um, you know, it's about moving that energy. So, yeah, massage uh, therapy. 100% beneficial. Um, if you believe it is, it will be and it can be. So recommend it for sure. Thank you, Caesar. Thank you. Kelly, maybe you can do a video of what uh, Caesar is talking about. The second, what is it? The second energy? Yeah, it's basically, um, it's, you know, it's near the, uh, the fifth chakra, I believe. And it, it's just like an energy, the second brain, they call it. If you look at, look it up on, um, you know, if you Google it per se, and uh, you look up the uh, a chi master and the second brain is what they actually called it. And they're referring to another energy source within your body. I mean, I know the chakras are, you know, energy sources, um, but uh, they, they actually refer to it as the second brain. So if you Google chi master, um, second brain, um, you'll find some uh, really valid... Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Prithvi Raj says, just curious and forgive me for my naivete. Just read his book and having difficulty in seeing inwards as I can't see my emotions or sensations. Can food help me with that? Kelly, did you want to start with, since you are a Qigong teacher, did you want to start with, I cannot feel, why can I not feel my emotions and sensations? Thank you. Sure. Uh, this is an interesting question, or statement rather, because everyone does feel their thoughts and their feelings and what it sounds like is where is um, seeing inwards requires a physical practice if you are actually having trouble looking inwards or connecting because feeling and seeing your emotions and uh, your sensations in your body if you're having trouble with that, you need to develop a physical practice. You already have a physical practice and are still having trouble, then you are blocking yourself from feeling and seeing your emotions and your feelings and your thoughts. It's that simple. However, even though it is that simple, that is not necessarily an answer to the conundrum of how do you feel you know go inward and stuff like that one of the things that i do is i like to teach people how to find their feet and breathe into their feet and even starting with just wiggling their toes it is literally that simple wiggling your toes that's like the most basic thing because to wiggle you know and even looking down at your toes like i'm doing it right now <laughs> looking down at your toes and wiggling your toes is the simplest easiest place to start to learning how to connect to and register your body and this is one of the reasons why i teach some of the stuff that i do with standing sake you're on your feet you have to feel your lower half of your body and if this is not exactly sure how to say the name prit viraj 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 the reality is if you're having trouble going inwards 
this or feeling your emotions or understanding the concept of how to go inwards, then you need to look at how overactive your mind is, how your mind is functioning and how aware you are of your mind and the patterns of your mind and how it distracts you from feeling. And this has been my primary experience when I first started understanding how to go inward, how much my mind loved to distract me with shiny things and to, you know, go, oh, well, I can make this list or I could, I could be doing this. It's like, why am I doing this? I, could, I should like, you know, be over there doing that. It's like, it, that's, if that is the case, then you need to really, really look at that. And so in the last part of that is can foods help? Well, yes, and no, because food, eating food, taking the time to eat slowly will help build a mindful practice of listening to the body and just sitting and being with yourself physically so that you can learn how to register the whole process of eating, swallowing, and sitting with the food as it sits in your stomach. That is something that I've spent time doing. And it is really, really effective because when you eat food and you can feel your belly and your stomach getting full, that helps draw your awareness from up here down into your stomach and down inward into your body. And it is really, really effective. So if wiggling your toes isn't sort of like working for you as well, take the time with every single thing that you eat or drink to listen to the sensations of your body, breathing in, swallowing, letting yourself register all of the sensations of your physical body as you eat and drink. That is a legitimate practice right there. And it, it's a great way to build a solid foundation for yourself. Thank you, Kelly. I, I feel like you have to start off with some kind of presence practice, right? Start with a sound meditation, make it a regimen, right? Daily, do it. Now, Eckhart is not very controlling. He doesn't say, wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning, ring a bell, go shower with turmeric, and then sit in your meditation. He doesn't say any of that. So during the day, whenever you feel like, take 20 minutes of your time and meditate, then increase, start increasing it. Make little changes, right? Take a yoga class. Increase your presence practice, and that will help you, is what I'm hearing, right? Thank you. Travis, did you want to add to what Kelly said? Um, so what was the question again? The question was, he cannot feel his, you know, Eckhart says go inward mm -hmm. and experience your emotions and sensations. Mm -hmm. He cannot experience the emotional field. Right. And how can that, how can diet and food help with that? Or how can he feel sure. his experience? Right, right, right. Um, well, I, I guess, I mean, I think what comes up for me, I kind of piggyback on something Kelly was saying is, as far as uh, uh, have some sort of physical practice. Um, I mean, even, you know, for me, I, I, I like jogging. Um, and so it, it, and it's, it's, it's more than a physical thing. I think it's part of my mental, emotional, just jarring everything loose. It, it makes me, it gets me out of my mind. Um, all that movement and, and the, the, the heart rate goes up, the, the, the breathing gets deeper. So that's just one example of, of doing, you know, some sort of rigorous exercise. Um, um, that, that's kind of what comes up for me um, around that as far as a way to you, you know, because what you, what I, I, I think what one would want is to, is to process that emotion um, in the same way that you would digest food or something like that. You want to, you want to assimilate all that you can from it and let it pass through you, just like you would be digesting. Um, I think that's what we need to do with our past 
with our thoughts and with our emotions because there's more coming. <laughs> so we want to be we want to be ready and open and available for the new to come. So we we have to we have to assimilate and and get all of the nutrients and all of the enriching things that build our uh, build us up into who we are out of our past uh, and get rid of the rest. And so um, so I think way, ways to do that would be uh, th things like body work, uh, exercise, um, yoga. Yoga practice is great um, because it really puts a lot of focus on consciousness and breathing and fluid movement all together as one um, or Qigong practice. Um, so, so those things. Uh, and then I think, um, you know, I guess what would come to what comes to mind for me in regards to, to nutrition or diet um, is, and, and I don't know how accurate this is, I'm just saying what's kind of coming to me at the moment, but, um, and one could experiment with it and see if it works for them, because I think it's going to be different with each unique individual, but just um, whole foods and raw foods, uh, foods that have a lot of water, um, things like that are, are just, are just going to help uh, more of that vibrant alive feeling. It's, it's not as grounding. Uh, it, it's it's going to help lift up that, just kind of try to free up that energy because it sounds like that's what might be going on is there might be some, I almost still think of it, again, I keep drawing the parallel of, of actually eating. You know, if you had some sort of blockages or anything, you'd want to eat things that have a lot of uh, you know, fiber, water, stuff like that, that are just going to help kind of clear those channels out. So that's, that's what I've got for that. Thank you, Travis. Mm -hmm. I also feel uh, one of the things that happens is initially when we read Eckhart's work, we know it conceptually. And we are so much in the thinking mind that the thinking mind has not subsided. So your block, so if this is awareness and this is the thinking mind, the thinking mind is your block. It's not going to let you feel the awareness, right? So all these methods that Travis and uh, Kelly are talking about are going to slow this down. What Eckhart says, right? You have thought after thought after thought after thought, like it's like this. You need to open it up a little bit more, a little bit more, these gaps. And at one point, this has to go away. The thinking mind has to go away. So then once thoughts subside, that level of and uh, reducing information, don't, don't watch TV, don't um, for for a week or two until you can control your thoughts. Stop the bombardment of information because that's the collective mind, right? Bombarding you. So that's what I feel. So perfect, Travis. Caesar, did you want to uh, say something about thoughts, uh, feeling inward, the sensations and emotions? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that's such a bad thing. Not being able to well. I mean, not to feel here emotions, but uh, we like to use the emotions as our guidance center to let us know where we're at consciously at most of the times. Eckhart says that when you have an uneasy feeling, um, you know, it's based, we know that our emotions are our body's reaction to a thought. And that's where that sensation comes from. Um, and does it pertain to or can it help with the food that you eat or don't eat? Yes, absolutely. 100 um, percent. Things that make you feel good um, are the good foods for you and, and vice versa, things uh, that make you feel bad after you eat, pay attention to your body uh, after you eat. Um, yeah, uh, connecting with the emotions are actually really important um, because it's an opportunity, um, you know, to uh, ground yourself in the present moment, really, uh, being aware that if you have a thought that makes you feel any unease, um, Eckhart speaks on determining where that thought came from past or future and just the awareness that you're not present as presence itself um 
then of course, again, we know that the emotions are the body's reaction to a thought. So I'm not sure that that's such a bad thing, really. Um, and then Travis, I believe, touched on he likes to jog, and uh, and that you know releases endorphins that you know are responsible for the uh, pleasure center in your brain. Um, so yeah, I mean, things that you do, things that you eat, all make a difference in, in determining you know uh, how you think and feel. It's all hand in hand, indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Caesar. Yes. Eileen, did you want to comment on uh, thoughts and sensations? I think this is more about inhabiting the body as well, right? So Kim Ming has a inner body meditation on YouTube. You can try that. This person can try that. And John Kabat-Zinn has that body scan. It is so important to experience your body from the inside. Like when you hold your hand, uh, can you feel the sensations from the inside of your body? Go ahead, Adi. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add on to something that Poonam had said that um, she had um, had brought up that um, making that space. And I just wanted to add something that I brought up a few weeks ago now that um, for me, I couldn't necessary I know even though I didn't test it but I know that I would not have been able to digest Eckhart Tolle's books had I not already had an existing meditation practice so like I started meditation maybe six weeks before I started reading the power of now and then I read it a couple of times and then read new earth a couple of times but Never had I ever read something um, where I was reading it and was like, oh my gosh, like it suddenly makes everything just makes sense. Like it just, um, and I'm not a, I hadn't deemed myself a spiritual person before, uh, was, you know, misunderstandings, misconceptions. But um, when I read it, I was like, just very like, present and reading each and every word. And um, I'd already gotten to a place where I learned the need for um, space through meditation. Um, I brought up before that like, I never thought I'd be very good at that practice <laughs> because I'm a thinker. And so the mind is like always going, going, going. But as soon as I read his work and like accepted the, mo the monkey mind, as part of you know the process, then it just got quiet and it just kind of went away. Um, but so I would definitely try and find um, a meditation practice that works for you. I have not been success successful with inner body meditation. Um, I've tried many times. Um, I mean, I can focus on the feeling in my hands and toes. It's about as far as I've been successful with getting. Um, I think Ryan got me one point where I was able to get to like my arms and the lower part of my legs, but that was about it. Um, so I know that like different types of meditation work for different people. So I would find what works for you. Thank you. Okay. We're going to take one last question because I think this is interesting before we go. Uh, it's getting late for Eileen and Caesar there on the East Coast. Uh, Betty asks, I've heard one medium mention before that every cell in our body is listening to our thoughts and words. So if we say, for example, I can't eat chicken anymore as it makes me feel sick, or I don't like to look the look of this chicken dish and then one day I find that eating chicken does make me feel sick. What do you say about this? My phone is playing up and the video stops playing. So I probably probably will listen to the recording later on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Travis, did you wanna start with this? Intending, uh, saying a thought and intending, does it work? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I like this one. I feel like it speaks to something that I've been uh, experimenting with as of, I don't know, maybe the past 
three or four weeks, I guess. Maybe it's been that long. I'm not sure. But um, so, well, I'll, 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 I'll keep my personal story out of it and see if I need to bring it in. Um, but it, it, it's uh, what it sounds like to me is actually really interesting uh, 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 a distinction or discernment to make is between what one's body is telling us and what one's mind is telling us. And to be able to, to d distinguish and discern between the two. And I, I think that that uh, quite likely requires, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a fair degree of, of, of vigilance and ability to discern. Um, it requires an honesty with oneself. Um, so I, I guess I, I will um, share my example. Um, so, let, you know, I, 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 for probably close to 15 years, I've had a pretty regular routine of running and working out, um, not too intense of a workout, uh, but, but, but consistent with it over the years and running as well. And I've had a couple of times, and lately this has been one where I go, what if I really dial up the, the workout routine and I could really bulk up and like put a lot of, pack on a lot of muscle, because that would be fun. Um, and so then I start reading and, and if, if you look at, you know, bodybuilding nutrition, which is not something we've talked about here today, <laughs> um, they suggest things like having, uh, you know, if you're doing really intense full body workouts and you're trying to pack on muscle, a gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. Um, and, and then more on top of that, your body could even utilize. So... And then your body can only absorb like 35 grams or so of protein in a sitting. So now I'm, instead of eating within an eight hour window and, and, and doing intermittent fasting and things like that, which I know my body really likes, now I'm eating, when I first get, get up, I, ha I have something with protein. And even when, before I go to bed, I'm having some casein protein, which is a, like a whey kind of protein that's supposed to absorb through the night. And I'm having a lot of whey. I'm having more meat. I'm I'm trying to eat uh, fermented pea protein and and get as much vegetables in and vegetable sourced stuff as I can because I don't want to be eating necessarily a bunch of whey or meat. So now I'm in this interesting space where I'm going. I I have to figure out. Am I telling myself I can't ingest this much whey <laughs> in my mind, or is my body going? You're out of your mind. Don't listen to bodybuilding nutrition. <laughs> listen to your body and, and just do what feels good. And so I don't really have an answer yet. <laughs> I'm still, still experimenting with it. Um, but I think that the main thing is just a bit for myself in, in my experience with what I'm doing right now is just to be easy, be flexible and, and continue to, to, you know, it, it it's definitely a call to deepen my presence practice so that I can feel more confident that I have that ability to be honest with myself and, and listen to be honest about what my body is telling me, because that's what you want to listen to. The body is always right. Um, your mind is often wrong. So, so that, that, that's what I think the lesson is for me. And, and, and I'm working on that and I commend anybody who's able to, uh, uh, you, you know, do, do that with a, with a high degree of skill and really listen to their body. I think that's like when you talk about Eckhart and going to the store and just going, oh yeah, that, I don't even understand it exactly, but I want that, I want that. And being able to do things like that. Um, so, but, but I, I really encourage experimentation and playfulness your body's only going to last so long anyway. We're talking about prolonging it, what, 5, 10, 15, 20. It doesn't matter that much in the end. So what matters is that we enjoy the time we have here and, 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 and use it to, to nurture um, um, the, the depths of who we are so that we can share in that way. So well, that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. We've talked a lot, like if you look at the old, uh, like sometime in May, June timeframe, we've talked about limiting beliefs a lot. 
these are the self-limiting in the conscious manifestation course. I don't know about the 2020 version. In the 2019 version, there's a bonus section and Eckhart touches base on the self-limiting beliefs and anything and everything. We are actually co-creating our external reality through what we are thinking and believing. So if you want to shift anything, then shift the, you know, that's why I think Sadhguru calls it the GPS, the emotional field is your God positioning system. So it's going to show you, right? And we've talked about in quite a few of the uh, Facebook lives, Kelly's talked about be on the joyful side. If you're irritate, irritated or angry, then you're not joyful. You're not on the high vibrational state. So go ahead, Kelly, your turn. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. I, I really liked what you had to say there, Travis. I, I completely agree. It's one of those things where you have to discern whether or not it's your mind or your body telling you that, oh, I don't like this anymore. Oh, it makes me feel sick because the mind can tell us stories, right? When we can get caught in the distraction of the emotional pattern, like maybe something happened when you were three and you do not remember it. And suddenly it's coming to the surface and it had to do with the dinner, a chicken dinner or something when you're three where someone, you know, lost it and the emotional impact is, is suddenly surfacing. So it's really, really important to go inside and ask, and you know, if your body's not liking chicken, then do not eat chicken for a while and see what happens. See what your mind does. See whether or not that story about chicken is still clucking along. <laughs> um, I've, I've been a bodybuilder in the past, a power lifter. I've done a lot of different types of diets. I, I do intermittent fasting. Uh, I used to, there's a period of about three or four years where I fasted every Sunday and trained. And what I found is that, you know, while protein is important for the body, it's more calories. It's more actually having the amount of calories that your body actually needs to function. And especially if you're eating uh, vegetables and greens. I mean, I was vegan for a while too. So and I know my body really, really liked being vegan, but my metabolism just got super crazy fast. And I had to eat a lot all the time. I was just constantly grazing. Uh, very interesting subject because we want to be aware of our body's wisdom. We want to listen. We want to be able to feel and to separate and isolate what the mental ego, the monkey mind ego story is trying to tell us. You know, if there's, oh, I don't like chicken anymore, and there's all this, you know, locking up of tension of emotional drama coming to the surface where it's just like, oh, don't eat the chicken. Ah, ah. You know, <laughs> that's a flag on the play of like, there's something to look at here. You know, um, look at that. Look at that. And honestly, just it's the simple thing of just stop eating chicken if your body doesn't like it. See what happens. Uh, Travis, you're absolutely right. Be playful, experiment, try stuff out. And that's what I've done. That's, you know, when people ask me, you know, what my workout routine is or like how I work out, I kind of have to, you know, figure something out to say because I'm, I'm very instinctual now. I just eat when I'm hungry and I work out. I don't have anything specific that I do. I just have a slightly kind of basic idea of what I'm going to do and when. And I just let, I, I honestly kind of let the universe or the day or the moment actually just sort it out for me. Because if I'm in the gym with my dad and we're doing physio and I want to go, you know, do a uh, bench press or rows or, or dips or whatever and the machine or the bench or whatever is occupied, I'm like, all right, let's go, you know, over here, let's do something else. Right. So that's the whole, you know, experimentation and being instinctual and, and travels. I thought you said that really, really nicely. It's, it's that aspect of being playful and experimenting and not being stuck on, oh, my God, the chicken. <laughs> you know, it's just like, go and find what does work. Thank you so much, Kelly. Zoe wants to show. Hi, sweetie. Hi, Zoe. You want to say something, Zoe? Sorry, Kelly. Um, yes, 
You know, uh, sometimes like at nighttime when people like think at nighttime, um, sometimes people th would think about like when you can't go to sleep, you don't go to sleep. Like you won't go to sleep because you have to believe you won't go to sleep. And then if you don't, then you won't go to sleep. Is that what you do, stay up all night? Believe that you want to? I don't really stay up all night. I just am up for like a few couple hours. <laughs> you need to say the reverse. Say, I, I need to sleep. My body needs to rest. Yeah. And she likes inner body meditation. That's her favorite. Like the body scans. Yeah. The I divine keep love. Up four in the morning. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, but you do it on purpose. <laughs> don't different. do it on purpose, but when it happens, I assume it's supposed oh, to happen. Okay. Okay. I thought, I thought it was something you were committed to. <laughs> yeah. Hoonam works, wakes up at four o'clock on purpose. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no, I, I agree. Work. I agree with the limiting belief. So I think that if you're going to think you can't eat chicken, then you're not going to be able to eat chicken. You think you're not going to be able to fall asleep, you're not going to fall asleep. You need um, to think so that opposite. exactly it's that conscious manifestation, but you're manifesting you're manifesting things that bring suffering okay. instead of the opposite. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you're you welcome. for the experience. We appreciate it. We're grateful for you, having you here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, Kelly, did you want to add some more? I'm sorry. No, I was I was just excited that Zoe had stuff to share. So I was just going, <laughs> cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Caesar, did you want to add to what Travis and Kelly and Eileen said? I, I think the panel cleaned it up pretty nicely. Um, I think the bottom line is, uh, and the common theme here is, uh, pay attention to what your body's telling you. You know, if your body's craving something and you wonder why my mother, before she passed, uh, you know, was, you know, it was, she was going through a crazy cycle where she would crave bananas and then come to find out she was lacking potassium. Um, she would crave two months later Cheerios or something in the Cheerios that her body was needing and desiring. And when she started to pay attention to her body is when slowly the medication that they had her on, um, you know, started to dissipate uh, to where there was none left. But yeah, again, the common denominator with uh, with everybody here on the panel, as far as this food thing goes, is um, pay attention to your body. Your body will let you know what is good for you, what you're not. Um, that is turning inward. Um, you know, uh, the question was something to the effect that the, uh, the cells are paying attention or um, dialing into what the thoughts are. Um, well, they're also paying attention to what the collective unit is, is telling you, which is the body as a whole. And, um, and if you do that, you pay attention to how you feel after you eat um, pretty soon without even thinking about it. You're, you're going to be in tune to what you should be eating, what makes you feel good, um, and, and the patterns on how you eat um, as much as what you eat will make a difference as well. Caesar did a fantastic, like almost spectacular job. I normally recap, he's recap. I have no more words to say. It's getting late for Eileen and Caesar. So I'm gonna end at this. Honor and a privilege to have you all here as well as everyone out there. Lots of love, many blessings. Good night. Bye. Bye.